Commercial yield testing. Accurate, dependable, repeatable. A must in today's competitive business environment. Achieving the highest meat yield at the lowest possible cost is a primary focus of broiler production worldwide. While it is easier to calculate and measure cost differences between two different products, it is not always as easy to see the effects those products and cost differentials have on yield. Statistically valid yield testing data is vitally important when it comes to choosing the correct breed to meet your company's production goals. Whether you are comparing the yield characteristics between two different breeds in your own operation, or the effects different equipment, nutritional programs, or other products may have on yield, sound data is critical. This video will outline the steps that Cobb believes are essential to conduct a yield trial that will be statistically valid and provide accurate and dependable results. Growing the birds. All broilers to be tested should be placed on a farm where live data can be collected separately by breed. The ideal situation for yield testing is to use a single farm with identical side-by-side -side houses where breeds can easily be segregated by house. This method ensures that both breeds will be tested under the same growing conditions, equipment, and management. Feed records and other live data should always be kept separate by breed so that the final live weights and feed conversion for each breed can be easily calculated. Birds should be fed and lighting programs used that are in accordance with the recommended company procedures for each respective breed. Yield Sampling One of the most critical points of a successful yield trial is selecting an accurate sample. This means selecting a sample that will accurately reflect the actual yield of the entire flock without having to process any more birds than necessary. The process Cobb recommends to ensure the selection of an accurate sample is called restricted random sampling. It is called restricted because you restrict the sample to mirror the actual distribution curve of the birds in each house. By using this method, the sample birds become an actual representation of the entire population of broilers. To set the parameters for the restricted random sample, you will first need to determine the average weight and standard deviation. When determining these parameters, it must be done separately for the males and females of each population. In order to obtain a restricted random sample, you must first weigh a full catch pen of broilers from three separate locations within each house. Cobb recommends these locations be at the front, middle, and back in the houses being tested. Additionally, you must weigh every bird that was caught in each catch pen except for obvious culls. When weighing the birds, remember to record weights separately by sex. The goal is to have weighed at least 100 birds of each sex by the time you have finished weighing the third catch pen. After weighing all the birds you have caught, you will be able to calculate and set the weight groups for selecting your male and female restricted random samples. Remember to calculate the mean or average weight as well as the standard deviation for both males and females. You now have the information needed to set up your sample selection cutoff weights for each sex. According to statistical rules, in a normally distributed population, 95% of the birds will weigh between plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean weight. Within that 95% of the population, two-thirds of those birds will weigh between plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean weight. Your sample must reflect this natural distribution. Now, calculate your weight intervals for each of the four sample weight groups needed. Mean plus one standard deviation, mean plus two standard deviations, mean minus one standard deviation, and mean minus two standard deviations for each sex individually. In a normal broiler house, it is recommended that you select 24 birds from each sex using this method. That means four birds that weigh between minus two standard deviations and minus one standard deviation, eight birds that weigh between minus one standard deviation and the mean, eight birds that weigh between the mean and plus one standard deviation, and four birds that weigh between plus one standard deviation and plus two standard deviations. 
By selecting this number of birds from each sex and breed, you will end up with 48 birds per breed, or a total of 96 birds if you are comparing two breeds. Now, begin randomly weighing male birds and tagging the ones that fall within the different weight intervals that you have predetermined you will need for your sample. Continue weighing male birds until the desired number of males for each weight group has been selected and tagged. Repeat the same process for the females in each house. Remember to always use individually numbered tags so that you can readily identify each bird by breed and sex throughout the remainder of the yield trial process. If you are going to process the birds immediately, load the selected birds into a cage for transport to the processing plant. Otherwise, use several catch frames to create an isolated pen for your tagged birds where they will have access to food and water until you are ready to transport them for processing. Remember to remove feed from the birds for a proper withdrawal period prior to processing. Prior to the plant. Before processing the selected birds, it is important to determine what part weights and yield data you want to collect. For example, if your company only produces whole birds or bone-in, cut-up chicken products, it doesn't necessarily make sense to debone the birds during the yield trial. However, if you foresee the need to obtain additional yield data for future product considerations, go ahead and debone the birds during the trial. You can always add the weights of different individual parts back together to calculate yields for different cuts, but you cannot break part weights down any further than how you determine to initially cut them during the trial. For example, if you need a yield number for bone-in split breasts and you have fully deboned your birds during the trial, you can always add back one-half the weight of the breast fillet, breast tenders, rib cage, and breast skin. However, if you make the decision to only cut split breasts during the yield trial, you cannot then go back and calculate what the deboned fillet yield would be. In the majority of trials Cobb conducts, we break the bird down into the following parts. Wings, breast fillet, breast tenders, rib cage, breast skin, back, thighs, and drumsticks. At the plant. When you arrive at the plant, the first thing to do is get an individual live weight for each of the sample birds before they are processed. On your data sheet, remember to keep all of the weights for each individual bird together, including the live weight, so that you can calculate the part yields for each bird. After obtaining the live weights for each individual bird in the trial, the birds can be processed and eviscerated normally on the plant processing line. However, you should remove the tag birds from the processing line prior to these birds entering the chiller in order to perform the yield cut-up portion of the trial. Cobb recommends performing yield comparisons on hot carcasses due to the large amount of bird-to-bird -bird variation in either water uptake when using water chill systems or drip loss in air chill systems. It is best to simply eliminate this variable from the yield trial process by simply evaluating the birds prior to this step in the normal processing line. You are now ready to cut up the birds and weigh the parts. It is recommended that one person cut all of the birds in the trial so that there will be less variation in the way the birds are cut. Use some sort of bag or tray for each individual bird to assure that all the parts from a single bird can be kept together throughout the cut-up and part weighing process. After each bird is completely cut up into the proper predetermined pieces, the tray or bag should then be passed off to the person who will be weighing all the parts. Place each of the parts on the scale individually and record the weights of all the parts of a single bird before moving on to the next bird. This will help you keep all of the part weights separate for each individual bird. Once you have completed weighing and recording all of the part weights for each bird in the trial, you now have all of the data necessary to calculate part yields as either a percent of the live weight or as a percent of the eviscerated carcass by bird. This yield data, along with the live data you collected by keeping the birds separate on the farm, will help to ensure that you make the best decision as to which breed will be the most profitable to your organization.